Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we've got the legendary Chris Iman with Sell Wholesale Houses. And he's here to share how his company has moved over 8,000 properties and lent over half a billion dollars in private lending. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm Steve Trang, broker owner of Stunning Homes Realty, co-founder of the OfferFast app, the only app you need for wholesaling, and I help people become real estate entrepreneurs. If you're excited for today's show, please give me some waves or some thumbs up. And before we get started, I started this show because I want to give back to our community. Uh, I definitely had some struggles in the very beginning of my career, and I'm sure you faced some struggles in your very long career. Uh, and so we want to shortcut that struggle for as many young leaders as possible. Uh, I don't charge a dime for this show. I don't make any money doing this. So here's all I ask. This is all it costs for you to listen to this show. If you get value, please tell a friend. Either share this episode right now, tag a friend below, or tell them your best takeaway from this show later on. That way we can all grow together. Uh, don't forget that this is a live show, so please post your questions for Chris to answer. Are you ready? Ready. Let's go. All right. What got you into real estate? Um, actually was a tech guy, um, worked for Phillips Petroleum, a couple other companies, and during the tech downturn got laid off twice in the same year. Um, that lovely conference room call where it's, hey, Chris, come to the conference room, here's your check, threw an extra couple weeks on there, and that was it. That was uh, what, what, what year? Uh, it was 98, 99, okay. and uh, I jumped into that the- That was right around the dot-com bus. Bus, yeah. Okay. And then uh, jumped into the two-week class for real estate, um, drove around a buyer for three weeks, and had her call me on week four and said, oh, I just called off a sign, and that agent got me a house. And uh, I went down the foreclosure steps, been going ever since. So it wasn't that long from when you were licensed to screw it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much a couple of months. A <laughs> couple of months, working with buyer, and I ah, forget it. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, after that, so you went straight into auction. Yep, straight to auction. So then did you do wholesale first or did you do private lending first? No, so I started uh, buying um, at the auction steps. I was just buying for my own account, rehabbing mm -hmm. and I'm selling them. Um, but, you know, networking got me. We're watching football. I'm telling you that I'm buying at the auctions. And this is before anybody's buying at the auctions, right? This is yeah. like 99. Right. So um, literally it, it didn't take much, like six to eight months by the time I'm buying one, you know, calling everybody up or actually they're calling me and they're like, what'd you buy today? Mm -hmm. I'm like, about one, two, three Main Street. I bought it for a hundred grand. You can have it for a hundred and two. Uh, bring the two grand in cash. <laughs> 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 um, and that was, that was pretty much the wholesale and I was wholesaling within a year of, you know, of starting in real estate. Okay. So this is 1999, 2000? Yeah, basically. Okay. So you're wholesaling and what was the process? What was that journey like from, you know, making the 2000 <laughs> on, on a deal to, I mean, your next, what was the next junction? Um, so I, uh, I was just kind of like an independent. Um, then, uh, I joined, uh, a group, um, by easy foreclosures. Um, mm -hmm. There were three of us in that, that group. Uh, and you know, there was two main groups down at the, tr at the trustee sales. Um, okay. Andy, who's in my coaching business with mm -hmm. me, w was one of the groups. And then, you know, me and a couple other guys are in the other group and yeah. just grudge bidding each other every day for, you know, six years. And so you guys were doing buying auction courthouse stuff for six years? Yeah. And we're just wholesaling, right? This is before any bid services. Mm -hmm. This is just buy on your own account, mark it up three grand, five grand, 20 grand, whatever you can yeah. get away with um, and wholesale it. Who are you wholesaling it to? Um, just, you know, buyers, um, back then it wasn't like text blast. It was just all email blast. Um, you know, I was, so back then email blast would work. Email blast was the only way to distribute. <laughs> and then you could, you know, do some cold calling and people called you. Yeah. Um, but there wasn't even texting back then. Right. It right. was just email blast. Yeah. Okay. And then what got you into private money lending? Um, so in about 2003, I met a couple guys that had, uh, couple truckloads of money mm -hmm. um, and uh, they they came to me and like hey I was borrowing hard money myself and they're right. like hey you know borrow my money and instead of paying other guys just borrow my money and then you can lend it out and make the spread um, so I started doing that in 03 um, the guy that I was borrowing hard money from saw a big 
piece of his business going away. Um, next thing I know, um, we had a $25 million line of credit with Wells Fargo that went to $100 million. Um, oh, nice. Probably had the $100 million line by 05, I think. Okay. So money wasn't tight yet. No. <laughs> at that time. Yeah, they're giving okay. out a $100 million line of credit. Yeah, no, that's, that sounds awesome. So you would he would borrow from Wells, yep. lend it to you, and he would make that spread. Oh, I was also on the Wells line. So oh, you were also on the Wells line? Yeah. Okay. Also signed that personal guarantee that went along with okay. that. Okay. So then you guys are making the spread between what you guys are borrowing from Wells. Right. So and we were at Prime Plus 2, and we were lending at 18. This was right. before everybody was in hard money, right? Yeah, yeah. 18 was – I still remember the first time I, I was at an Azure event back in 2007. Yeah. I was like – 18 percent right. what's going on here plus a thousand dollar fee yeah what who would agree to this now i know a lot of people agree to it right <laughs> uh okay so you got into private lending what were some of your early struggles then on the prime uh, on the private lending side there wasn't a lot of early struggles this is this is way before everybody's in the business everybody's mm -hmm. in the money business and the wholesale business i mean everybody now it's then it was just two groups and we mm -hmm. can we basically controlled the whole city Oh really? Um, and as far as hard money lenders, there were there were more hard money lenders. There was probably three or four, but um, I mean our portfolio was eighty million bucks. Wow. So, and loans are turning over. So I, I mean, it said you said put five hundred million. I don't actually know. We were turning over eighty million dollars every one hundred and twenty to one hundred and thirty days. Wow. For years. So yeah. I mean, do the math on that. That's two hundred and forty million dollars a year. Yeah. So you're probably over a billion then lent. Yeah. In your I career, just, I just didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, then the recession occurred, right? So yeah. you you started during the tech bust. There was nine eleven. You said like that didn't really affect you so much. Yeah. And then you went through and had this great growth that we're like similar to what we're experiencing today. And then a recession hit. Right. What technically wasn't a recession. It was the secondary money or the secondary market quit buying paper. Mm -hmm. So like, if you can't sell paper, you can't reoriginate a loan. And if you're a hard money lender mm -hmm. and there's no recourse, they just start handing back the keys. Right. Yeah. So, but you were still borrowing, you know, whatever the $100 million line of credit. Were you, was that close to you or that, that was still maintained open the whole time? No. So it, um, we would, we would borrow $100,000 from, we'd lend $100,000. Wells would buy 90% of that. Mm -hmm. And then you have these covenants or rules that you have to follow. Um, I see. But as your foreclosure rate grows, because, you know, if the secondary market can't buy paper, mm -hmm. you're a fix and flipper that has a hard money loan, but the guy buying your house can't get a loan. Right. So no one can sell a house. Yeah. Right. So, you know, Wells Fargo, as soon as you get outside the rules, mm -hmm. they just lock your bank account down yeah. and you got no money. So then what did you do in that situation? Oh, you just, uh, we came asset manager, we foreclosed on quite a bit of houses, um, you know, dealt with them. I think, I think 2007, eight and nine were dealt with, you know, doing a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. and then I went out. So taking over properties that you guys lent on for uh, fix and flip guys. Right. Okay. So did a lot of that. I, that wasn't actually, um, my position in the company. Um, and then I started another venture and, you know, went back at it. Mm hmm so what was that other venture? Oh, sell wholesale houses. Okay. So, so that's when you became another wholesaling entity. Yeah. So there was two, there was buy easy foreclosures and then what was the other one? No, that's so sell wholesale houses. So at, when the, our group, when the downturn hit, we just kind of all went our own different ways. And, right. And then, so sell wholesale houses pretty much started in 07, 08 and then okay. went from there. And that was you by yourself? Uh, I have, my sister's my partner. Your sister? Who's yeah. your sister? Kim Mudd. Okay. She's, she's the one. Because I noticed she's she's listed a few of your properties. Yeah. She, so well, that, she, yeah, that makes complete sense. Broker. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you had to shift your business in that time. You became an asset manager. Started, unfortunately, had to take over properties. But you were you were still on the hook, right? With, with personal guarantee. The personal guarantee. Yeah. I lost everything. You lost everything. Yeah. So you were one of the guys then. Like, yeah, these guys were losing their properties, but you were also losing your properties my 08 tax return said negative 4.2 million bucks that's i'll just that explains it <laughs> negative 4.2 million were you able to carry that loss forward yes, at least okay I was. <laughs> so there's a win there there's some small win small win <laughs> okay so knowing what you know today what will you do differently um 
if no you're starting if you're starting over like right now no personal make, guarantees no personal guarantees right okay um and then obviously you know watch the market um yeah i was a little bit leveraged i was having fun i was making a lot of money mm -hmm. right and right and i made a lifestyle that was off making a lot of money mm -hmm. now i make pretty good money and my lifestyle is almost all cash yeah so you're a little bit less leveraged today yes than you were back then yes okay uh so private lending is extremely competitive in phoenix today i actually met with a lender today and she shared with me that they're in multiple states but she enjoys north carolina the most because there you can charge two points and get 14. right like, wow yeah you can't get away with that here no so how do you set yourself apart in phoenix with private lending you know i don't uh I just keep building the network, mm -hmm. um, and everybody's going to get their piece of the pie. Yeah, um, I'm not going to chase down rates for business. Right. Um, you know, I don't have bank lines, so I don't have any personal guarantees, and I'm not going down that road again. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm also not going to chase down lowering my down payment and and risking it because real estate cycles, right? Yeah, it does. I've, I've been through the rodeo one time. I'm not going <laughs> through it again. Right. So. Um, yeah, if uh, if my portfolio shrinks, but but I got a really great portfolio, I'm great with that. I'm, I got no problems. So if you don't mind sharing, like what is like you know I I got this great deal today, Chris. I've got a seventy percent of market value. I bring it to you. What am I borrowing it at? I'm generally fifteen to twenty percent down. Mm -hmm. I stretch below that every now and then if you're getting a really good deal. But generally, mm -hmm. it's you know because if you don't have any. You know, I saw, I think I saw 5% down recently. I've definitely seen 10 a lot. Mm -hmm. If you have the ability to just walk away, you can just walk away. Yeah. I mean, it's no recourse state. There is no recourse. No, there's like, not. you just walk away. Right. So, um, you know, and I, I've seen a little bit of uh, the first part of people trying to get away with that down payment. Mm -hmm. This buddy selling to this buddy, you know. I oh, caught, really? I caught one of those four days ago this buddy's selling to this buddy you know assignment fee of 15 grand and their down payments 15 grand hmm. you know i see okay and what are your what are your rates right now on the 15 percent 15 percent 15 percent down is 14 percent 20 percent down is 12. okay so that's not it's not bad yeah okay so but what will you tell someone you know they're like hey chris i'm looking at you i'm looking at option b i'm looking at option c and i i say you know why should i go with you what do you say I'm just saying well, we've been in the business a long time. Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty reliable, I'm, but I won't chase down rate. If, I mean, I trust me. I get people like, "Hey, they'll do 11." I'm like, "Great, go get it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate. Come back to me next time when they run out of money or or something doesn't work. I get or don't find on time. Yeah, it's all economics, right? Yeah. And I get it. Um, people need to make money, and I'm not willing to chase down rate or down payment to you know, try to get business. Right. And then same question, wholesaling. Yeah. Again, extremely competitive. If we're not the most competitive wholesale market, I don't know what it is. Everybody's a wholesaler in this market. Yeah. Everyone's a wholesaler today. So what sets you apart, uh, uh, competitively for wholesaling? Why should someone wholesale with you or? Well, I'm once again, I'm not a, I'm not a wholesaler that just is trying to assign every deal. Right. Mm -hmm. I got a, $30 million hard money company that I control. So if I need to fund, I can fund. Right. Like, and we all try to wholesale. Um, I make mistakes. I buy too expensive every now and I'm, I'm yeah. not perfect, but at least I have the cash to pay for it Yeah. when the time comes. Other wholesalers don't have the cash to pay for it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, that's the benefit of working with me. If I say I'm buying it, I'm buying it. Mm -hmm. So, so there's no like, Oh man, we can't perform. Yeah. No, I'm and I'm I made mistakes. I uh, I did a deal that I bought, and sometimes I mean to be competitive and beat people to the the house. Mm -hmm. You know, I buy off pictures ninety five percent of the time. I don't I don't get the walkthrough. Yeah. So uh, you know, I walked into a house that someone has sold me, and I walked in through the front door, and I'm just like, man. And I knew the second I walked in the house that I was losing money. And I had a five thousand dollar earnest money. I just called my buddy and I'm like, "Hey, can I just walk from the five grand? Just go sell it to somebody else." I mean, that was this is two weeks before close, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Come on, it's an old guy. He's already moved." And I'm just like, "All right, 
I knew that I was losing more than five grand. I closed on the house. I think I lost ten or eleven. But I mean, I could have just walked from the earnest money. You could have and saved myself five or six grand. Yeah. What did you see when you walked in that you knew you were losing money on that deal? It was a tri level. <laughs> so that you walked in the house, you walked down the right stairs, four steps into the living room, and four stairs up into the dining room uh, with the kitchen. Yeah, no, those tri levels. Uh, the second I walked through the door, I'm like. <laughs> All right, so um, what does a good referral look like to you? I mean, anybody that an, I get agents that mm-hmm. you know don't know all the other wholesalers in town. So, yeah. hey, this guy buys houses. Um, I think I just got one in Old Town Scottsdale for two fifty five, which you don't see very often. No, you don't. <laughs> so, um, and that was just an agent, you know, calling me saying, "Hey, um, this guy wants to sell in Old Town Scottsdale." I came across at 255 I'm like yeah grab it right yeah so someone that um, has a deal tied up and doesn't know what to do with it or an agent that yeah you know you walk in and they got 12 dogs or you know they've never thrown one thing away for the 20 years that lived there right you know all those you know agents that don't know have the referral once it gets to the wholesale group I mean the prices just get lifted and lifted and lifted right it's nuts yeah, yeah. Yeah, by the time you get to you, if someone if there's been a wholesaler or two along the way, yeah, there's nothing left. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you attribute your success to? I mean, you've been doing this for almost 20 years now. Like, how have you had the staying power to still be in the in the business? I mean, there's so much change constantly. How have you been able to stay on top of it? Well, what's funny is I'm not as good as all the younger people in the business mm-hmm. with social media and all that. Actually, it was kind of funny. I read an email um, that said, I want to make sure that the person coming to coffee is legit because I don't want to waste my time. My, uh, I can attribute most of my successes. If someone asks me to coffee, mm-hmm. it's five minutes. It's ten minutes. Yeah. I went to coffee with almost every person. When you called me and said, hey, be on my show, what did I say? Yeah. And how long did it take me to say yes? Not very long. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I've gone title companies. I mean, I did uh, foreclosure lunch and learns for realty executives, I, mm-hmm. I think, every month for three or four years. Oh, really? I just, wow. I would cycle their offices, their 16th Street office, mm-hmm. their Tempe office. You know, I did, you know, I think, I don't know how many foreclosure classes I gave for Fidelity National Title. Um, All right. It's just, but you get in front of 50, 60 people. Mm hmm and you get to build your network and i don't i mean everybody these days builds it all on social media right i built it actually by getting cards so consistency yeah and staying in front of people all the time so um you talked about uh the the courses so that's actually one of my questions how you intentionally stay in front of people because i heard a great story about you right We, we talked about it earlier so how do you consistently stay in front of people um you know i just I try to follow up. I'm a busy guy, mm-hmm. but I try to answer text messages. Email is probably my weakest link, but yeah. you know. Um, and like I said, I'm in front of people right now on your show. I'm in front of, and I hit every happy hour that I get invited to. Yeah. And you, and I'm not really a talkative person. If you go <laughs> see me in a happy hour, I sit in the corner. But it's like, who's the tall guy, right? Right. So, but you're there. Yeah, I'm there. You're available. Uh, and then you know, uh, we first met through uh, a Fidelity Mastermind. Right. Uh, it's been disbanded since, but that was you know a cool opportunity because I was like, oh hey, that's Chris, that's that's the guy that sends out those emails with those discount properties, right? Right. Yeah. So definitely, you're 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 putting yourself out there, making yourself available. Uh, so what does your organization look like today? Um, we still run a bid service. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so you guys are still doing bid services? Yeah, we still do bid service in oh, four I didn't counties. Know that. Yeah, um, Pinnell, Maricopa, Yavapai, and uh, Pima. Mm-hmm. So we still do that obviously there's not a lot of volume but um there's still opportunities yeah still opportunities and you know we're there we're staying in front of that group of people Mm -hmm. um i uh we still wholesale um and then you know we do our hard money but literally it's uh two assistants a bookkeeper um a couple bidders and a driver yeah and me and my partners and so i'm it's my sister's my partner on paper, but Tim and Kim Mudd are they're married, been married for twenty five years or twenty six years. They oh, got wow. like okay. four kids. Okay, you know so. So, then going back to the auction, let's say I buy a property, 
at the courthouse steps. So, you know, I said, Chris, I like this property. I want to bid on it. Then obviously you'll do the hard money loan on, the, on yeah. those as well. So we do the hard money for the auctions and the, you know, all the wholesale properties. Okay, cool. So that's like a one-stop shop. Right. I don't really need much else than that. I guess I need the 10000 to put down. Yeah, so we do the bid service and we do we bid with our own money. So you don't have to worry about You don't need the 10000 Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. All right. Um, so we talked about, um, you know, you're, you're wholesaling. How many properties are you wholesaling a month right now? Probably 20. 20? Yeah. Okay, and how do you source your deals today? Um, we actually, we're, we got our in-house, so we do some cold calling and some letters. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, like you heard the story, like I follow up with just the smaller wholesalers. I, yeah. I get on Monday, Wednesday, I just say, hey, you got anything new? Hey, you got anything new? I literally sit down there, I go to a breakfast place for coffee, and I just start texting people. Yeah, that's, that's a great system. So who are you calling or mailing to? Um, no, we do it all. We hit the foreclosure list. We mm -hmm. hit the uh, probate list. We hit everybody that bought prior to 2000. You know? Yeah. I mean, same list everybody else are hitting. Yeah, pretty much. That's the same list <laughs> I'm hitting. That's for sure. So I, again, going back to my story earlier about Azria. So I went to Azria and like, man, these guys are charging 18%. How do they get away with it? This is, this is you know, feels like murder, right? Yeah. Um, but at the, on the flip side of that, it's like, boy, I would love to be in position to be able to lend at 18% someday. So you missed that boat. I did miss that boat. <laughs> it's eight, 18, 18 is going to be very tough t today. I, I do know some lenders that are 18, but they're getting zero down. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel, I mean, I, I guess your actions probably speak or to answer this question, but do you feel hard money is still where it's at? You know, it's a the margins are obviously a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. I think uh, lending in other states, you got a better opportunity, like you said about North Carolina, fourteen and two points. I mean, mm -hmm. if that rolls every six months, you're really it's like eighteen plus, right? Right? Yeah. Because um, two points will turn into four points in a six month time frame, right? Yep. Um, so, but you know what I did learn um, from my '07 downturn is we got hurt more in the other areas that we were lending in and doing business in than we did in Phoenix, even though sometimes Phoenix took the hardest hit. Right. But we understood it. We lent better at it. Um, so I, I'm just staying here. Why do you think you took a bigger punch in the gut outside of Arizona? Because we were using salespeople that made, maybe didn't understand the market as well as we understand the Phoenix market. Okay. Um, and... So let's say, let's just say today, you know what, Chris, I like what you're doing. I'm going to compete against you. I want to become a hard money lender. What are the things I need to do? Um, well, you need to get some cash, right? So yep. find a guy with a big giant checkbook and <laughs> make sure he trusts you. Yeah. Um, you know, we roughly have $30 million and it's probably made up of about five to six people that trust me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in the downturn, you know, I went, a I lost all that money and went negative about a million and a half. I spent from 08 till about 2015 mm -hmm. paying all my friends and family back that million and a half. Didn't file bankruptcy, didn't pay them a dime worth of interest, but I paid them all back. So that's awesome. I got a lot of people that'll give me their checkbook. So. Right. But so, you know, that's the first step. And then, you know, if you can go from there and, you know, get bank lines and all that kind of stuff, because they're actually coming back but they want to see, you know, years in the business and all that fun stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. They want to do this some, some they want to do some due diligence. Right. Um, okay. So, uh, I, I saw a presentation, I want to say a year and a half, maybe even two years ago now, you and Andy, and you guys had this program you guys are rolling out, REI Ground School. Yeah. Tell me about that. So, uh, it's just basically a, a, a local educator. Um, obviously we got plenty of national educators. Yeah. Um, a lot of them just, Live here, here. <laughs> well, they all live here in Phoenix. They're right? in Phoenix, Scottsdale. Yeah, so uh, we went with uh, more of a, a local program because um, Andy and I both have been born and raised in real estate in this market. So mm -hmm. it's more of a hands-on training for guys that want to learn the business from not a national educator, more of a you know a guy in Phoenix that understands the market. So yeah. um, it went really well, uh, but you know all the big guys come in fortune builders and mm -hmm. you know and they spend just bunches and bunches of money to get 
it, I can't get on Facebook or Instagram without seeing an ad. Right. For, for Guru. Yeah. Right. I mean, and they're here every week. Right. And I mean, between I think there's you know five to six big companies. Oh, there's Fortune Builders. Who I don't even know who's behind that one. Yeah. It's Cody. Yeah. There's Dean. Yeah. Kiyosaki. Yeah. It's just nuts over here. Yeah. And you j and they're here every week. And you you go up against their Fortune Builders has got like a four hundred million dollar spend mm -hmm. on Facebook. Wow. You know, my spend was like forty thousand. They're spending. Yeah. Or not, sorry. Yeah, forty thousand. They're spending, all right, forty million or four million. I think mm -hmm. is their budget. Like, it's ridiculous. Right. You know, and so, you know, it was a it was a great opportunity. Um, actually, you know, it was fun to actually give back and mm -hmm. and educate people and see them make money. Right. Um, we had some students absolutely crush it. Just That's awesome. Crush it like uh, this one guy made. And he's sixty two and he made like two hundred grand in six months. That's so, awesome. So watching that was was pretty fun and um but just the economics of it, just like wholesaling, hard money, everybody's an educator now. Yeah. So, so then you've are, are, am I am I hearing that it's winded down? We are gonna do another class in January. Uh -huh. Um but we've gone to a different marketing strategy, um, that I'm not gonna disclose, but Okay. <laughs> because I think it's a little different. Um mm -hmm. And it won't cost us as much money to do, so therefore we can do it. We don't have to have this huge, giant venue. We can still give back to the people that are really interested, but don't have to put, you know, when you have when you spent $40,000 in marketing and a hotel venue, and then you got your salespeople, I mean, you got to break a hundred grand to even make money. And yeah. that doesn't seem fun. And I, I want to get back to where it's fun and just people that want to learn about the Phoenix market and how to, be a 62 year old guy and make 200 grand in six months. I want that guy. Right. I don't want to compete with all these, you know, big guys. Oh no, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I would love one day to be able to, to be able to do that, but man, there are so many people doing it and it's hard for a new wholesaler to know who's real and who's not. Right. I mean, how can they? Yeah. I mean, you go to, um, I actually am buddies with a coach on the phone mm -hmm. and he's, he's a wholesaler in town, but I mean, they go to these mass meetings mm -hmm. and they pay their money and they're talking to somebody across the country that's getting paid whatever 70 75 bucks an hour to keep teach them how to wholesale you know all the students that joined uh, my program got a thursday morning meeting mm -hmm. with me from nine to ten o'clock yeah. and i'm like okay what'd you do last week mm -hmm. why didn't you do it you know right <laughs> Don't so make excuses. Personal yeah. interaction. Yeah. Um, and it's custom for th who you're working with. Yeah. It's not just a whole room full of people. Uh, okay. So looking at your profile, you know, we do have, we have to do our research. And I would say it looks like you're a family man, right? Yeah. So uh, Tell me about that. I got three kids, um, pretty much all in college. So they, they moved on. But uh, definitely growing the business mm -hmm. with uh, three kids. I... Uh, Unfortunately, you know, divorce happens and uh, yeah. had uh, three kids all in sports. So I basically was a chauffeur. I'm sure plenty of people know what that's like. You yeah. just drive here, drive there, drive there. Right. Um, but yeah, I just built a business and, and raised kids. Didn't do much dating at all for a long time. Just yeah. uh, just focused on them. But it was, it was great. Um, my son played football and basketball. My two girls played volleyball. I got to watch sports all the time. So how did you balance work and family? Because that's a struggle we all have in real estate, right? And you were doing massive volume. You weren't just Joe Blow wholesaler. Like you were in many people's eyes, the guy in Phoenix. Well, uh, texting has definitely helped, right? Cause that's, yeah. you can do it from anywhere. But uh, no, I just, I'd go into the office. I'd do my foreclosure stuff back, you know, I. Mm -hmm. And I'd show for my kids. Um, I picked my kids up for, they went to Christian school, so no bus system. Mm -hmm. um, every morning at 7 a.m., took them to Northwest Christian. They both went, they all went through Northwest Christian. And then, you know, did my foreclosure stuff, and I was, drove my houses, you know, wholesaled. And then I was back by their neck of the woods at like 4 o'clock mm -hmm. going to football practice or volleyball practice or basketball practice. And that's that was the program for a long, long time. So it sounds like the mobile office on your phone 
It's yeah. the key. Yeah. But you don't have to take many phone calls. You don't have to. Obviously, most of us text way more than we take calls, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a few calls I text all the time. Obviously, you know, the, the laptops or the surfaces or the iPads obviously mm -hmm. help a lot too. Um, and that's, you know, that lets me do real estate from anywhere. So right. that's what's awesome. Okay. Um, and then I, I see lots of pictures of you in the water. Right, boating. I don't know which boat is yours, which one's not yours, but I see lots of boats. So let's talk about that. So, uh, yeah, I've been boating for a long time. I'm a licensed captain. I'm also a licensed pilot, but uh, <laughs> um, my boat is in the Bahamas. Okay. Um, I do well, that's awesome. Yeah. So I we do. need to vacation together. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to spend uh, one of my bu bucket list items. I'm going to spend uh, seven days on a boat in Greece um, okay. a week from today. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So Very cool. I'm going to do the islands of Corfu and the, some southern islands about there. But, yeah, I try to get on a boat sometime like four to six weeks a year. Um, and I'm, I'm always available. You can still text me. You can still email me. I'll answer. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's why I do real estate, right? Right. I'm not going to go buy an expensive car. For me, it's all about life experiences. It's not about, like, tangible things. So. So you said four to six weeks, so it means four times, four to six times a year or four to six total weeks? Like Four to six times a year I try to get to. So I've been to the Bahamas three times this year. Um, I've been to Key West. Um, I'm going to go to Greece. I got the BVI set up for November. What's the BVI? British Virgin Islands. Ah, gotcha. So. I'm not a well-traveled person, so that's cool. It's good to know. Good to know friends with boats, too. I think they say... Boat ownership is not so great, but having friends with boats thats yeah, is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let me deal with it, right? Okay, so we already talked about nurturing. So what are some CRM tools or systems that you could not live without in your business? So I, I, I'm i a dinosaur, right? I'm still just using, like, eye contact to send out the the email blast. I don't yeah. I don't even have a text blast. I don't, you know. I'm actually working on setting it up. I, I'll have one probably in the next 30 days, but mm -hmm. literally – finding deals and you know is the network mm -hmm. of agents that i deal with and literally texting the wholesalers over yeah. coffee two or three times a week yeah and i literally just use the same phrase so i can search in my phone and just pull up the list and start texting them that's awesome uh okay any interesting war stories um interesting war stories yeah i mean uh there's, I mean, which what kind are you looking for? Uh, nightmare scenarios. I mean, not like the tri level, but far worse. <laughs> um, far worse. Uh, obviously, a post sale BK is no fun. Mm -hmm. um, I did uh, bought a house at auction, and so they didn't. They were trying to save it, so they BK'd after the house was paid for. So now you got to get. Now you got to get the stay released on the BK just before you can start the eviction. Worst thing that can happen to you at a trustee sale. Um, so they filed the BK to stop the foreclosure, but they but they missed the window. We missed the window, and we'd already pay for it. Okay. So that doesn't happen very often. Um, a hard money story that's you know granddaughter forged grandma's signature on a hard money loan that we did. Um, that took about, so house is sold to another wholesaler, you know, she's evicting grandma, grandma didn't sell the house, um, we lent the money on it, so now we're oh, tied up on, wow, yeah. So she sold her grandmother's house, house right. without grandma talking to grandma. grandma. So that was so about, so Ulta should have covered that. Yeah, but it um, doesn't cover the interest. Doesn't cover the interest. Right, so if you're a hard <laughs> money lender and you're paying your buddy one of your five to six guys that has money with yeah. you and you want his money back right you pay him right of course <laughs> you, gotta, you find a way to pay it. so you know i forgot to ask this earlier so uh you got five to six guys you know they're pulling their funds together um did you create a syndication to make that happen it's all individual deeds of trust all individual deeds of trust yeah so i do a credit facility mm -hmm. um document which says hey you're going to lend me two million dollars and then i i assign individual deeds of trust mm -hmm to approximately that number. It, I mean, I might actually have $2,050,000 assigned to you mm -hmm. 
even though you only have $2 million with me. Right. Um, but yeah, it's all individual. Um, I could have done a syndication, but there's been some bad syndications that have happened in this town. Yeah, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, a buddy of mine basically said that, yeah, you want to end up on American Greed, start a syndication. Yeah, so um, I've, uh, in the downturn, you know, it's, you know, I've had some buddies lose a decent amount of money in syndications. Mm -hmm. I've had other people that I know lose some money in syndications. And so I, this is a way for me to raise money and say, you don't have to worry about that. All I'm right. gonna assign you an individual deeds of trust. If I get hit by a truck tomorrow, here's your portfolio. Here's the spreadsheet. I assign, as soon as I get your money, I assign them to you. Um, you know, I'm a licensed mortgage banker, so that's a difference. So just a little education. As a licensed mortgage banker, you're allowed to obviously take fees like you are a broker, mm -hmm. but as a banker, you're allowed to take a spread. Mm -hmm. As a broker, you're not allowed to take a spread. Oh, okay. Um, and then if you tar and if you're not licensed at all and you're taking a spread, then you're actually take you're basically taking a fraction of a note that isn't your note. Mm -hmm. So it's technically a securities violation. So yeah. jail uh, time is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just kind of the breakdown. So at being a banker, you're allowed to take a spread and take fees, and that's why we're a licensed mortgage banker. So walk me through this because everyone sells syndication as a great resource. You know, you go to one of these real estate seminars and they're like, oh, you gotta start a syndication, you just need 30K to get started, blah, blah, blah. But everyone I've talked to in the real world says it's a nightmare. Why is it so bad compared to what they sell you at the seminars? Well, the 30 grand for the syndication is just to get basically the lawyer's fees done, right? Right. And now you gotta go raise the money. Mm -hmm. Typically they want you to have some of your own money in the, in the syndication, but then you gotta go Go raise it, and I mean, it's way easier now than it used to be because of crowdfunding, right? Right. Um, and you can actually do, um, and I'm not a securities attorney at all, so. Right. Um, but you just gotta go raise the money, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually do a little email blast now saying, hey, I'm looking to raise money. That's actually with the new crowdfunding laws allowed. Where oh, that's allowed now? Yeah, that's allowed oh. now. Wow, okay. Um, before, you actually had to have a relationship and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Um, it's a little easier um, now, but you know, it's not something that I've ever wanted to do mm -hmm. just because it's kind of my selling tool. Like you have your portfolio, it's yours. Mm -hmm. If something goes bad with my company, something goes bad with me, here it is. Right, you, you don't need an auditor to come down yeah, and break it up. Here's your 20 loans. You know, you yeah. had $2 million with me. Maybe it's only, you know, one, Point nine eight million, but it's it's all there. You own it. I assigned it to you. Um, right. It's more paperwork than obviously a guy with, you know, a PPM or a syndication. But I don't know. All the guys that give me money like it. So yeah, and I think it's a lot cleaner if there's ever a situation like you said, anything happens to Chris. Chris gets hit by a bus. Right. Paperwork's there. You Paperwork's don't need a receiver to come through. Nope. Break it all up. And then just so you guys know, the ones that are listening. A receivership, or not a receivership, uh, syndication is when a bunch of people put, put money together to create a securities fund. Uh, a lot of, if you go to these real estate seminars, a lot of guys promote this, but you know, they're also making money <laughs> right? <laughs> when they sell it. Generally, they're the attorney, right? Right. They want the 30 grand to yeah. put it together for you. Sounds really sexy. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Pace has a question. Um, what do you see as the future of wholesaling? Um, I mean, know, do you see like in three years, five years, that things are going to be the same way they are today? Oh, today. it's going to be even more competitive, right? I mean, the younger kids are just getting better and smarter, right? Yeah. I'm a dinosaur, but <laughs> I just I just rely on the network, and, you know, I'm doing some things to change that, but, right. um, you know, this is probably the most competitive market there is. I mean, if you look at, so when I go to Collective Genius um, and look at the numbers from all the other big wholesalers throughout the country, I think the last time I did a letter, um, the response rate was uh, like point zero zero one five percent. I mean, I heard it's atrocious. Yeah, I mean, not even a fifteenth of a percent. Right. And where you know a lot of guys in Collective Genius are like, oh yeah, the yellow letters are two point two percent and two point eight percent, and I'm like, man, to be in your market, right? Um, so it's just going to be more and more competitive. It always seems like 
this is the breeding ground for every technology piece. I mean, look, you got Open Door, OfferPad, mm -hmm. you know, they just Zillow. Um, right. They just keep coming. Now you got the what's the new three thousand dollar listing service that just came in from Utah. They just showed up like, and they got billboards. Fifteen hundred, not three thousand. Oh, is it fifteen hundred? Yeah. I just saw their billboard. I don't yeah. even remember their name, but yeah. So, um, and I think the I can't remember. Someone shared with me. It was a Sean Terry, you know, webinar, and he was going through his numbers like you were talking about. He's like, we well, you know if we do a hundred of this, we're gonna get twenty of this, and blah blah blah. And we walk into the house and we offer them this, and they beat us up to this. And he was saying like, you know, we try to get to like eighty cents on a dollar, and like the people on the on on the webinar were like laughing, and you could hear them laughing. They're like, what do you mean eighty cents on a dollar? Right. Right. They're like, we give them like fifty five, sixty cents on a dollar. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> good thing about Sean, he's got a big enough network that he can sell that, right? Right. So, um, I mean, his, I'm sure his network's bigger than mine. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's just market, right? Right. So it's just a crazy, crazy market. Um, who, again, pace more being another great question. Who do you look up to? Who do I look up to? Um, you know, I, uh, I kind of had some guys that he looked up into this industry but they're they're all gone i hate to say that i'm i'm like the old guy um you know i actually look secretly like look at some of the younger guys mm -hmm. and all the stuff they do and like man i need to kind of get on my game or i need all to right. get out um so um all the technology that's coming on board um that i mean i don't even have a text blast for my wholesale that's yeah. that should i should be shot by now right so um <laughs> It's funny that I'm actually sometimes looking up, not I'm looking at younger kids, right. you know, doing doing my business better and uh, needing to go that I need to I need to get better at it. I did close 21 house package in August, so That's luckily nice. luckily the reputation helps. Right, but. Um, so they can change the technology, and I'm, I'm not saying that's not. A, we're not going to discount that. Obviously, they can you know use different tools, whatever. But they still have their relationship and their reputation, right? Right. Yeah. So that's where you got a huge leg up. Yeah, and I and I continue to, you know, I was at um, a networking event. You know, there was a VIP networking event. I got an invitation, mm -hmm. right? And I don't ever turn down an invitation. Now, yeah. I mean, it, I think it was on a Monday, Tuesday night. Um, there I am, and I. You know, I actually, uh, you know, I ran into some old friends, and I mean, I, I was there at five, and I was still there at ten or ten thirty, you know, working through that because you know you run into people and you never know. You should see how many deals I make from the Phoenix Open because you run into people you haven't seen in a year. Really? You re you reconnect with them, and then they're back on the text message like, "Hey, what do you got?" So, so I think in addition to boating with you. Need to hang out with you at the open as well. Oh, Got to go to the open. <laughs> All right, uh, and then uh, Gustavo Placeras wants to know who who do you look at as your mentor? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, or are you in any coaching programs? You know, I uh, I just belong to Collective Genius. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird because you know I've only been in Collective Genius for two or three years. Um, there are a couple monsters out there. You yeah, know, Brad Chandler. I don't know if anybody knows who he is. He's a monster. Yep. He's a machine. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of gave up, like the you know the big dreams of you know having, you know, the big, the Ferrari or the Lamborghini or any of that stuff. That's right. That's not me. I drive an F one fifty. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I drive a truck. Yeah. And uh, you know, I just you know good family guys I look up to um, people in the community um, people that are giving back mm -hmm. um, those are guys I look up to because you know they're they're working hard and they're doing more for the community so. okay cool uh, Brad Pickett wants to know about your story about your boat sinking of course he does <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and then uh, Pace says that he's happy to show you how to do a text blast if you'll take him to the Bahamas with you <laughs> <laughs> um so the boat story, um, I'm, I literally saw I had a, a boat in the Bahamas, it was a private boat, um, cruising across, I needed to get some maintenance, was taking it to Fort Lauderdale. I did about 80 miles on a Tuesday um, with another guy in the business, his name's uh, Steve Peterson, some of you guys may know him, may not know him. Mm -hmm. um, and we stopped at the West End and then 
um, we're driving from the West End to our Fort Lauderdale. We're 21 miles off the coast of the Bahamas. We're cruising at eight and a half knots. And I look down, doing eight and a half knots. Well, my boat should do nine and a half knots. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, well, something's wrong. So I run downstairs. Um, it has a high water alarm. Next thing I know, but over the diesels, you can't hear it. So I en open up the engine hatch. It's knee high in water. Um, so run upstairs, shut down the engine that's taken on the water. Now no more water is coming in. All three bilge pumps are running. Um, I went that Wednesday because it was supposed to be glass out there. I was supposed to go on Saturday, but mm -hmm. it called for, you know, six to eight foot seas. Mm -hmm. Well, there was 30 knots of wind out of the east. Um, I'm in a boat that has a bunch of water in it, and it's not floating right, and 30 knots of wind in the ocean can create swells over time. Yeah. So from time of problem to getting picked up out of a dinghy, by another fishing boat, Coast Guard helicopter over top was 42 minutes. It's not horrible. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so needless to say, I uh, got a trip back to the Bahamas. The guy picked us up, said, hey, we're going back to Bahamas. It's not like someone picks you up in the middle of the ocean. You get a choice of where you're going, right? Right. So uh, he took us back to the Bahamas. I even forgot my flip-flops. Everything went down with the boat. I, I'm in trunks in a... A tank top and no shoes and uh found some size eight was the best I, ha I could find wearing some size eight and <laughs> flew back home <laughs> insurance cover it all um yeah after about uh three depositions for me i think a couple for steve and about eight months or nine months i finally got got my check wow so i bet you're not using that insurance company again well, i just think they think that we went out to the middle of the ocean to get some insurance money I'm like really do you think i want to go out in the middle of the ocean and risk a bunch of lives for some insurance money but yeah it just it was a painful ordeal but uh i guess you know if you have a safety plan at least it's nice to know it works yeah for sure <laughs> uh bryant's Apples wants to know when you guys are going golfing again um let's go golfing all right i'm not very good as he knows well so bryant chris uh yeah chris is anytime so uh, Pace wants to know, besides wholesaling, what are your other long-term investment strategies? Um, obviously, everybody does rentals, or they, a lot of people have jumped into rentals, right? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, obviously, rentals probably don't pencil in Phoenix as well as they do probably in other markets now. Right. Um, you know, my investment strategy has always been, you know, I'm taking a spread on hard money. You know, mm -hmm. I'm paying, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't have cheap money. I'm paying, inv you know private guys so they want 10 I'm lending at 12 or 14 and I'm you know making my spread there so um, you know I've dabbled outside of um, real estate a little bit mm -hmm. and I don't seem to do as well so yeah. I've just really kind of stayed focused on what I know but you, I, you try the you know the Burr model was it buy repair rehab was it buy rehab refinance I can't remember but you know, you buy, you cash out, use that money, buy another one, or do you have, um, you know, buy and hold, like every three that I f wholesale, buy a property, any of those things? I don't, I really just focus on the hard money, and I'm, I'm a wholesaler at heart, I don't rehab anything. If I, yeah. the only time I'm rehabbing and listing is because I can't wholesale it. You know, right. obviously, like I said, on my commitments to buy, mm -hmm. you know, I, I told grandma I'm buying her house, I can't leave grandma high and dry, so, if I don't wholesale it, I keep it. And every now and then I'm like, you know, I'm trying to wholesale it and I don't make as much as I would. But I'm even to the point like if it's a two or three grand loss, I'll wholesale it. I'll All just right. move it. You just know? Get down, just that, be done with it. Yeah, that's my, and you know, even that one I lost 10 or 11 grand on, I just move it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a wholesaler, but every now and then I'm like, ah, do I lose seven on this one? No, I saw a Obviously, I bought it for that price, so I saw the vision there mm -hmm. that maybe everybody else can't see, so okay. I'll give it a shot. Um, and then do you use any of your own capital when you land, or you always use? No, some of it's mine, but uh, mostly it's other people's. My my current money is in building spec homes in Paradise Valley, mm -hmm. um, but I got uh, two going currently, and that'll probably be my last two 
just because why be in a two point one million dollar house when there's little uncertainty, right? So yeah, well, talk about that little uncertainty. What what uncertainty are you sensing? Um, well, you've seen uh, obviously there's been some articles about some of the super hot markets: Seattle, Portland, um, California, mm-hmm. all taken, all all slowing down. I think if any wholesaler didn't say they saw a blip in June and July, mm-hmm. they'd be not telling you the truth. Because yeah. definitely, I mean, um, maybe they didn't see it as much as I did, but it was tough to wholesale a house in June and July. Now, August has been better. Um, you know, the start of September has been better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you talk to, you know, I always go to people that understand the business, so I just call title companies, right? Right. Oh, um, they see it. They know it. <laughs> So I called a couple title officers, and uh, they're like, "In June and July, I closed ninety percent of my book." That was their response, and I'm and I'm not in title, so I didn't know what that meant. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm like, "Explain that to me." Well, that means they closed, you know, their June and July escrows, but they didn't have any opens, so they didn't have any of their pipeline coming back in. So that was kind of telling. Um, I've reached back out to them since, and things seem back to normal but uh obviously it's it's a cycle sooner or later it changes um you know stock markets had a 10 11 year run right real estate's going on a 10 year run um you know what's nice about arizona market now is everybody has equity right right? the last time nobody had equity Mm -hmm. you go to b of a and hey i want 105 percent on my house sign right here wait your three-day writer decision and you got a high 105 percent of your house um with not a lot of people giving seconds um everybody has equity so but if you if a market slows um because of uncertainty Mm -hmm. um all it takes is a three hundred thousand dollar house and having a comp but you have a guy that bought in 2010 for 150 on that $300,000 house, and he wants to drop to 270 because he wants to move. Only a handful of those. That's all it takes. Yeah. Um, okay, so what was I going to ask? Dang it. Uh, oh, you, you were mentioning that a lot of wholesalers noticed a blip. It was harder to wholesale in June or July. When you say it was harder, was it harder to acquire or harder to move? There was just nobody buying or right. not as many people buying definitely so you know i uh but is I, that is that a bad sign i look at that as a good sign no yeah it's it was you know you don't have bu- as many motivated homeowners yeah well i was you know trying to keep 20 a month you gotta keep buying right as so a wholesale i guess yeah, is bad. yeah. <laughs> but for so, a market yeah so i had bought i had my schedule and i thought i was gonna have a great june mm-hmm. and you know i've committed to buy some i think i i definitely from one guy that I buy from, I lost $21,000 just because I've committed to buy and I sold them and they're just, the buyers are gone, but I've committed to pay for it. So, you know, you know, but I mean, you know, the, the real estate market as a whole is great. I mean, I think last time I checked, there are 16,000 active listings and that's actives. That's mobile, dirt, everything, right? And MLS, Mm -hmm. um, an even market, not a buyer's market, not a seller's market. It's like thirty-two thousand. So right. you're, you're half inventory of like a flat market. So um, builders, you know, used to pump out sixty thousand permits a year. I mm-hmm. think they're they're like twenty, twenty-one, something like that right now. So obviously, you know, our market's very healthy. Um, just you know, obviously uncertainty and just calling. It, there's always the herd mentality, right? Yeah. Once people kind of start going that way the masses follow well it's part of that self-fulfilling prophecy too right yeah. if everyone says the sky is falling the sky's gonna fall right right and our at least in our business uh so then pace wants to know if you got guys lending to you at 10 is that 10 all the time or only 10 when it's drawn depends on what they sign up for some people like to keep their cash you know maybe it's a guy i got one guy a couple guys that are apartment guys right mm-hmm. and they don't want to commit if i if you if it's 10 all the time i make you say i want a year 18 month to your commitment mm-hmm. um if you just want to be liquid, um, then it's kind of as you have money type right. of deal. So I got a couple guys that are apartment guys, and they don't know when their next opportunity is to grab an apartment. And, you know, they do apartments in other states too. So they put money in, and then as it pays off, they just kind of balance their sheet, whereas other guys are like, 
here, I want you to take this five million and just keep it. Both just send me the check and tell yeah. me if there's a problem. Okay, nice. Uh, so Ernie Paz wants to know: Have you had any partnerships go south? Um, you know, I've only been in two partnerships mm -hmm. in my 18, 19 years. You know, and uh, I mean that w one broke up because of the you know two so 2007 downturn. Mm -hmm. We were actually under contract for $44 million to sell our company. Um, the next thing you know, the downturn happens. Citibank, who's buying us, cancels. Oh. Um, and when there's no money left, it's not hard to say, oh, we've been in business for five or six years. Do I still like you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we just all just went our own ways. There mm -hmm. was nothing. I mean, there was just like, hey, let's go try something new. So, right. you know, my partners are now family. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't break up a family. All right. So yeah, and then the other partnership. Oh, that's that's the only two. Oh, one was okay. down. One was done in the downturn, and then you know I've been I've been partners with uh, Kim and Tim, my mm. family, since then. Okay. Um. And let's see. So hey, you know we were we were betting on this earlier. If anyone's gonna say that you were really good looking, got a comment. Richard <laughs> Ger Gerbeck wants to know why you're so handsome. Because the same bald head as he has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, so Gus wants to know if you're nationwide or local. We already talked about your local. Yeah, I'm just a local guy. All right. So uh, what is your biggest struggle right now? Obviously, everybody's biggest struggle is finding deals, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's why you said the guy, Chris will text me every week or every mm -hmm. other week. Yeah. Know, he's like, it's like clockwork. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, you know just keep going after it just like everybody else does um i don't have the technology that some of the younger guys do but i just use the network and i keep and i keep trying to expand the network so okay uh and what is your superpower no superpower i do like all the marvel movies though they're pretty good yeah yeah i enjoy all of them too and then we got the dc ones they're not quite the same level uh what lesson would you want to teach today's young real estate entrepreneurs um, you know, it's just kind of, you just can't give up. Like, I mean, it can't be easy in this market being as competitive as it is, mm -hmm. but I don't know. You, you just can't give up. You can't, can't stop trying. I mean, I think I attended my first trustee sale, um, in late September or maybe early October. I bought my first trustee sale in December. That means I went down there every single day for three months. Yeah. And didn't buy a house. You're so, bidding. Yeah, but I, but I didn't buy a house. First house I bought was 11611 North Thunderbird Road. I mm -hmm. still know the address. Sun City. I bought an age-restricted property. <laughs> <laughs> so you so, put your dad on title? What did you do about that? No, I just I borrowed hard money at 18% and paid a $1,000 fee. Wow. You know, yeah. I started this business with a home equity line of credit of 60 grand. Wow. No money. Just a home equity line of credit. So. Were you, did you feel like you experienced the, the, the good old boys network starting in 1999? Oh, yeah. Totally. There was a good old boys network for sure. You should have seen, I mean, the games people played back then. Yeah. yeah. So talk about that. Because we always heard about the good old boys network, but I never got to experiencing. So what, 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 was, oh, what was, was that like? Uh, I was, there were a couple guys that controlled this entire market. And, you know, back then to buy a house at trustee sale was $1,000 cash. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all walking around with, you know, $70,000 in our pocket. But, um, you know, guys that are buying 10 to 15 houses a day to lose $1,000 bucks cash to keep a guy like me out of it, that's nothing because they're going to wholesale 10 to 15,000 or 10 to 15 houses at, mm -hmm. you know, three to four grand. Um, yeah. So they, they would bid up and then not buy just to keep you out of it. So here's, so you're new at the trustee sale, right? Mm -hmm. And there's three or four of them at the trustee sale. Mm -hmm. I still think there are three or four of them because they didn't trust each other, but that's just my own opinion. <laughs> but there's three or four of them at the trustee sale and house opens at a hundred grand, right? Yeah. Someone bids 101,000. Then you bid 102,000. Then someone else jumps in and bids you to 150,000. He doesn't pay us thousand bucks. You're at one forty nine nine. It's your first sale. You were anxious. You look at it. Trustee calls you back and says, "You want the house?" You're like, 
got a little aggressive there. This is my first time, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't buy it. Who do you think gets it? The guy that bid a hundred thousand and a hundred bucks. Oh. Goes back to them for forty nine thousand dollars less. Oh. It's Lots a pretty good game. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when it's only a thousand dollars cash, you can play all kinds of games, right? right. Especially if you know. There's definitely some stuff. I mean. Well, I knew they bid each other up or bid you up to keep you out. Yeah, it was. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really understand the dynamic of that. So it's very interesting, like a history lesson, right? Yeah. It, and I, I've, I've talked to a couple of guys saying, you know, hey, I'm thinking about expanding down to Tucson, and I said, good luck down there. There's good old boys network down there. It's like I don't even know what that means. Surprised it still exists, but. Well, obviously, um, you know, you got guys that go to the auction every day, and you're new, um, and they make deals. Um, or they're they they're making deals frequently, mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, that's why the ten thousand dollar bid check came in to keep. Oh, is that the reason? What it was? Yeah, to keep that little. Oh, I can. I mean, you can lose a thousand dollars, no big deal. You lose yeah. ten thousand dollars, way bigger deal, right? Yeah. So um, you got guys buying ten to fifteen houses a day. They're not worried about their thousand dollars to keep you out of the auction. All right. Okay. Uh, and what is the greatest you lesson you've learned in your real estate career? Um, probably never sign a personal guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, got it. You know, not the first person on the show to say that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, obviously I, I didn't have a personal guarantee, you know, and I didn't have a personal guarantee with some of the friends and family, but I'm, I but mean, the friends, it's and family. friends and family, oh, right? That's a guarantee. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was your favorite, best or most interesting failure? Um, I mean, obviously, when you lose four and a half million bucks, or you know, that's, I mean, that's the worst one you can have. I mean, nothing, nothing has happened that bad since then. Mm -hmm. You know, I've probably lost, I lost, my biggest loss is twenty six thousand dollars to date since the two thousand seven, um, and that was a, a fraud based house. So I mean, I couldn't do anything about that. No, you can't. That's the grand <laughs> granddaughter one. Yeah crazy so uh is there a book that you've given more than any other um this is one of those questions is really bad for me i am so i was successful um because i'm a numbers guy yeah i'm i was i graduated grand canyon with a double major in math computer science okay um it took me three times to pass my english entrance exam in the grand canyon to give you an idea how much i read right <laughs> so I'm a numbers guy. I'm a math guy. I do not read books. Okay. That's fair enough. So, um, and is there anything that keeps you up at night? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, obviously we all have our stresses when, um, things go bad. Mm -hmm. It it can be the simplest one that just like I'm thinking about. It might be a house that I'm trying to wholesale and, um, I thought thought it was a home run, so I I committed to it, and it's not selling. I don't like no one likes mistakes, right? Right. So the smallest mistake, even if it's only like you know a ten thousand dollar loss, it's still just it spins. You know, I'm like, oh, I gotta I gotta face my partners on this one, and I don't obviously no one likes to be not successful. Yeah. Well, ten thousand dollar mistake is still a pretty serious mistake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but if you're doing twenty houses a month, you know, it's I mean. It's, it washes Something, out, yeah. law of averages. Um, okay, so Max Jimenez wants to know, what keeps you going on the wholesaling side? You know, what else am I going to do? I can spend four to six weeks a year on a boat, and probably my biggest complaint from all of my friends is I'm always on my phone texting. Yeah. Um, you know, like, Chris, be, be here. I'm like, yeah. I'm working. I don't know when the next – text that's going to come across it's going to make me five to seven grand so yeah. but uh three kids in college you know that's not cheap no uh, no <laughs> <laughs> so uh obviously and and the college doesn't stop you should the tech the text blasts come in hey dad can you move 200 bucks hey dad can you move 300 bucks hey dad <laughs> you know well i got three kids they're gonna be going to college so how much do i need to wholesale a month to be able to afford that well i've been uh i'm currently I don't know, somewhere about, I think U of A is 12 grand for, I think, tuition a year. I think ASU is 11. 
Um, the third's just entering junior college, so that's a little cheaper. But I mean, I had they all went to Northwest Christian, so I've been used to this for a long time. <laughs> so just gotta keep performing. Yeah, just gotta okay. keep going. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Pace wants to know if you had a time machine, what stage of your life would you go back to, and what would you tell that version of himself? Go back to '07 and liquidate. Liquidate. Yeah. Go sit on a boat for the rest of my life. (laughs) Well, I think that's a good place to end it. So if someone wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Um, Either email or text message. Yeah. You want to uh, announce your cell phone here? Yeah, it's uh, 602-292-0816. Awesome. And, again, guys, if you like the show, please share this episode right now. Uh, And then uh, tomorrow night we've got our monthly meetup. Jared Vidalis is going to be presenting. Uh, we're going to be at McFate Brewing from 4.30 to 6.30 uh, tomorrow night. So please be sure to attend. We'd love to meet you. Thank you, Chris. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. That was awesome.